This is Kate BYP with a little bit on this Tektronix 7904A assembly that I restored. It's been entirely recapped, not only the mainframe, but the, the plugins, including the 2.4 GHz extended range spectrum analyzer and the microwave TDR plugins. And if you think this mainframe's a blankety blank to work on, Try taking that spectrum analyzer apart. I don't recommend it. It's a nightmare. This is a called a mainframe assembly, kind of after the idea of a mainframe computer. It receives these plugins. These plugins have eject levers pull out, and the back of these units fit in with edge card connectors. Pretty slick design. Don't drop them. Warning on a spectrum analyzer and TDR. Keep the ports terminated. Those are 50 ohm terminations. Do not leave them open. That might be the end of the unit. I can't go through the almost a month it took to restore this. What I can tell you is do not, unless you're absolutely certain they're defective, take any of these boards out. Don't even touch any of those custom ICs. Don't unsolder that flexible ribbon. Don't mess with it. That's a high speed tuned amplifier strip. Special IC down here. Special everything, special wire, special cables. Don't bend any of those cables. Back under here is the delay line. Don't bend it. The magic trick to getting inside the front of this is taking out screws on this rail on each side and tipping that rail down and that allows this assembly to be lifted up so that's how we get to the the board and such back in here to replace parts on it there's a backplane board in here don't try to take any of these out to recap it. You've got to take all these plugins out and you got to reach way back in here with the soldering iron and tools. It's a real pain. On this board, I actually cut the capacitors apart. That electrolytic is soldered to the stubs of the leads of the old capacitor that are still through the board. Do not try to take that board out. There are several of these fancy coaxial cables and special connectors, all high-speed tuned stuff. Don't bend any of the cables. They've been formed in place for 40 years. Don't try to bend them. All these electrolytics were changed without taking any of the boards out. Uh, some on the other side, where I could reach both sides of the board, here on the upper right, I replaced them by just heating the connections on the board, pulling the old ones out. Not easy, but doable. Be aware that those wires down there can't rub against that frame. They're right up against it. So I put tape on it so they can't rub. There's no model and serial number tag on this thing. The closest thing I found to a serial number was by lifting this assembly up and there's a, a B number written under that rail. They hit it very well. The gotchas in this unit that will destroy it if you don't recap them correctly. And that's not a maybe, it will. Is back here in front of the fins is a complicated switching power supply assembly that has several, I think it's four switch mode transformers on it and a handful of different voltages, upwards of 50 volts. It's a real pig to take that out and to take it apart. There's a warning in the manual, don't disassemble the regulators that clamp on that heat sink. What isn't obvious is the potential to destroy this unit. From this board back here with the VMI VM164 high voltage tripler. That's a high voltage power supply board. That's the analogy to the horizontal output and high voltage source in a television receiver. But back inside there, you can see bent over. 
are these capacitors. They put three caps in those positions that were either 30 volts underrated or only 30 volts overrated. They leaked all over the board. If that board fails, if anything in these units fails, it can destroy upwards of five special switching transformers. And at that point, there's information online, something about how to rewind them, but you're basically screwed. And there's several tales of woe online about people who just bought these things and hooked them up and the power supply smoked and now they got junk. Um, kiss of death. Kiss of death to that high voltage multiplier is to have it leak and arc. It's 21 kV coming out. Back here and behind the multiplier, it's almost right up against that metal wall. That wall's grounded. There's a potential for these old potted multipliers to get holes in them and start arcing and burn, and that destroys them. So the thing to do there is to put a piece of plastic behind it as an insulator so it can establish an arc to that chassis. Also, can't have that high voltage lead pinch against anything. It needs to be nice and routed out of the way. I put extra tape around this for a little bit more insulation. Down inside there is a delay line. So watch the routing of that lead, and that's 21,000 volts, so be careful with it. Or maybe it's 24 kV, I don't recall, but it's it's high. Um, don't touch that CRT socket unless you absolutely have to. Those old sockets, they run warm, they run hot. They can crumble when they're taken apart. I, this one doesn't look this one doesn't look broken. There's really no reason to take it off. Unless there's a bad connection on a pin, then it's likely the socket's damaged. This spectrum analyzer is a flipping expletives, I won't say, nightmare to work on. It is built like a tank. It's worth doing, but oh my, be so careful because it's very difficult to get those units out. I don't remember how I did it, but basically revolves around taking this back cover off, taking these screws out, separating these sides, and some of the boards, if I remember correctly, tip out. As, as I recall, the ones in the center stay in place, but um, there's one of the electrolytics replaced. Lots of tantalums in this unit. As a result of recapping this unit, especially with modern tantalums, it has half of the noise level on the uh, display that did originally. In the manual, it shows the noise from the zero, the baseline here, up one and a half divisions. After I recapped it, the noise was down here at three quarter, which is an amazing change. You can see back in there, the, the edge card sockets. You slide these units back in, slide them in slow and careful when they touch them, just push gently and evenly on the frame. Don't push on controls and it'll go back in and click. If it doesn't click, it can fall out. But like in the other units, don't mess with or bend these hard lines. This is a mixer unit buried up inside there where you can't see and I can barely see is a YIG oscillator can. Back down inside there, 248111. Those things are something like 8,000 bucks to replace. So this ain't a toy. So use extreme caution working on this. Document everything thoroughly. There's a danger in here of a screw. I think it's right here on this board. Of course, not assembled quite right. And when I took one of the screws out, I think it was this one, a flat washer fell out down inside his unit. And I had seen it was there, and I heard it go. Otherwise, I would never know it's in there. And something like that inside here can destroy components. So use extreme care. Um, I didn't get in the assemblies up here to do any recapping. There really isn't any. There was one down here right at the uh, feed-through capacitors. So a very difficult unit to work on. Extreme caution. 
Uh, you can see tantalums laying in here. It was kind of tough to fit the new tantalums in there, but had to do it. And that made a huge difference in performance. So that one wouldn't fit underneath that connector. So I had to fold over and put the leads through. So very tedious work. Great deal of chance to destroy it. Worth every minute of it if you get this thing working and get it right because it's a beautiful piece of equipment. Uh, KBYP did that.